पश्यन श्रुवन स्पृशन जिग्र अश्न गच्छन स्वपन श्वसन प्रलपन विसृजन गृण उन्मेशन निमेशन इंद्रियाणींद्रियाथु वर्तन धारय ब्रह्मण्याधाय कर्मा संगम त्यक्ता कौति य लिप्यते न सपेन पद्मपत्रिवांसा काये न मनसा बुद्ध्या केवलैरिंद्रियरपी योगिन कर्म कुरुवन्ति फल त्यक्तात्मशुद्ध सो वी आर सींग दि फिफ्थ चैप्टर विच स्टार्टेड विथ अर्जुना क्वेश्चन अर्जुना क्वेश्चन वॉज वॉट इज बेटर सन्यासा इज बेटर और कर्म योगा इज बेटर मीन्स डूइंग कर्मा इज गुड और नॉट डूइंग कर्मा इज गुड एंड many people have liking for not doing karma means they think that if no responsibility is there nobody is there to tell me you get up you do this you do that how nice it would be so people have fancy for this type of situation they imagine that sanyasa means nobody is there to tell me my spouse will not say you make a cup of tea or coffee or whatever nobody is there to tell anything and i can do just contemplation 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 that's what we think you know as if like contemplation is something you can switch on so contemplation starts it's not like that you try you go to your place uh, and after rest you like say contemplation start <laughs> does it start no only worry start So Pujya Swami Ji nicely said, "Who contemplates? Contemplative people contemplate. And contemplativeness you have to earn. And how do you earn? You earn by vairagyam, by this practice of upasana. And thus karma." proper performance of karma with proper attitude will make you prepared to be free from karma karma helps you to be free from karma like you work very hard then you can relax so to and to earn relaxation you have to work effortlessness comes by lot of efforts people think that see swami ji how you talk effortless is effortless comes by a lot of efforts have gone into it otherwise you come here nothing will come <laughs> you look at the face of it <laughs> is difficult so people have fancy and especially when things are going tough in your life in indian setup the idea of going to rishikesh take sanyasa comes not in very young age but little later 40 50 middle age crisis comes you know <laughs> <laughs> then people think of this because in india the idea of sanyasa is there in the western country they have got something called hobo you become hobo means you just give up on the road side and really on road side you don't have anything Only think if some people make video on you and earn money, that's all. Oh, oh, they nowadays they do that. But Bhagwan Sri Krishna is telling Arjuna. Really speaking, there is no, there is no conflict between choosing sannyasa and choosing the pravritti. If you are having 
the idea having the understanding of both the ashramas sanyas ashrama which stands for nivrutti and grihastha ashrama which stands for pravrutti because if you are ready then sanyas ashrama may be useful if you are not ready sanyas ashrama is miserable therefore for most of the people arjuna karma yoga is better even though karma yoga and sanyasa both the ashrams are contributing to moksha by providing chitta shuddhi by providing conducive atmosphere both are contributing but for most of pe- the people this karma yoga is better it is something like with which class you start your education one only only some very bright they will say no i will go right away to fifth or something but generally you start with what one only so bhagwan says that arjuna for you and people like you karma yoga is better better because it's safe then bhagwan said arjuna you focus more on spirit of sanyasa rather than the form of sanyasa follow or focus on the spirit of sanyasa and what is spirit of sanyasa vairagya means the spirit of sanyasa remaining in grihastha ashrama you can have the spirit of sanyasa not sanyasa in terms of withdrawal from the duties but sanyasa in the form of not having attachment not having insistence and resistance then you are a sanyasi in fact you are better than sanyasi because sanyasi is not doing anything and he is free from insistence and resistance you have a situation still you are free from insistence and resistance so definitely it is something like when traffic is not there and you drive the car you are not a very great driver you a drive can drive full traffic is there coimbatore traffic and there from i think what is called a cut road or something is there no ha ah, eh? cross cut road ah, cross cut <laughs> cross cut road and all gandhipuram and all there you drive then you are a good driver great driver so remaining in this situation still you are able to maintain vairagyam certainly great so bhagwan says instead of running away from the situation try to develop inner renunciation and then bhagwan talked about the wise person and he said the wise person has got inner sanyasa of vidvat sanyasa gyan karma sanyasa with the help of knowledge he gives up karma and what is his vision that was given in the fifth fifth and uh, eighth and ninth month shloka neiva kinchit karomi ti yukto manyate tattva even when activities are going on he understands that i am free from the activities all activities are at the level of body mind sense complex and then 10 to 12 bhagwan is now talking about karma yogi because karma yoga alone will make the person ready for the ultimate sanyasa called dana karma sanyasa and in the 10th shloka bhagwan said what is karma yoga offering the karma to ishvara without having attachment to karma and karma phala that person is a karma yogi and he or she will not be affected by the papa because he will be doing only the duty and if the duty involves some himsa he will not be affected by papa and he remains unaffected and also it means that the result of karma will not affect the person he will have the shock absorber in the form of prasad buddhi then 11th shloka bhagwan elaborated that by saying kayena manasa buddhya by kaya manas and buddhi and indriya with the sense organs kevalaihi kevalaihi means mamatva rahitai when i am doing the karma i do not have the mamatva means minus with reference to the body with reference to the action or with reference to even the karma phala means it is a ishwara's grace 
by ishwara's grace this body is able to function by ishwara's grace this result whatever result may come i am not having any ownership sense of ownership with reference to karma and karma phala there is no arrogance about doing karma this is my karma this is my activity that type of thing is not there and such a person does the karma for what atma shuddha e for purity of the self and your self means the mind because our vedanta siddhanta is atma the real atma is ever pure real self is nitya shuddha therefore it is not to be made pure it is ever pure therefore here atma means the mind and the purity of the mind means purity of the durita purity of ragat veshas so person by karma yoga becomes free from this impurity of the mind now in the next shloka bhagwan says yukta karma phalam tyaktva shanti maapnoti nishthiki ayukta kama karena फले सक्तो निबध्यते सो हियर भगवान इज एक्सप्लेनिंग व्हाई कर्म योगा इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंड व्हाई नॉट हैविंग कर्म योगा मेक्स द पर्सन बाउंड कीप्स द पर्सन बाउंड दैट आइडिया इज गिवन युक्तहा युक्तहा इज रेफरिंग टू ए कर्म योगी ए कर्म योगी हु इज एंडोड विथ proper attitude or yukta ha means one who is resolved about the place of karma and karma phala pashakara nicely says ishwaraya karma karmani karomi na mama phalaya iti evam samahitah so one whose mind is well focused well resolved that this karma i am doing for ishwar preeti for ishwar anugraha and not for my material benefit so this type of nishchaya one who has is called yukta means a person who has got clarity and conviction about karma yoga that person is called yukta such a karma yogi karma phalam tyaktva having given up the result of karma and giving up the result of karma means not having merely material consideration for karma karma phalam tyaktva means giving up the material consideration that i want to do karma only for getting money there is no other purpose that type of consideration is not there another meaning of karma phalam tyaktva is insistence for particular result is not there i am doing this i should get result if they some people don't get that result they commit suicide why so much insistence they say i will not take no for the answer if they do karma and they don't succeed they become atheist i don't believe in god i work very hard i did not get the result so i don't believe in god i prayed and i still bhagwan did not give me result so many people become atheist that is called this insisting on karma phala and while doing the karma there is no focus on the result there is no obsession of the thoughts of result i focus on karma not what will happen what will happen whether is the result will come or not come or not that is not there and when the result comes i take it as a prasada of ishwara and not something which is to be claimed by me it is something to be received by me with gratitude this is called karma phalam tyakta means i don't insist that i am doing this therefore this result alone should come many parents have this problem swami ji how much i explain to my children they don't listen to me and i feel that i cry swami ji i cry i cry i feel so anxious you know. why because you are insisting that my children should listen to me i told so much swami ji and they don't do it hey, that's okay 
my duty is to tell them that is my duty they whether they should listen, listen to me or not it is not in my hand even now i am teaching some of you may be switched up mobile switch up there <laughs> some of you may be sleeping half sleeping so they catch up with catching up with their sleep because like last time they could not sleep so they can be sleeping that is not in my hand in between i can cut some joke to wake you up that much i can do for <laughs> and above i cannot do anything that is how so depending upon the prarabdha of the vakta shrota comes so the, <laughs> the listeners are coming as per the prarabdha as per the prarabdha karma of the vakta and as per the karma of the shrota vakta comes that also is there so ee karma phalam tyaktva means i don't insist i can suggest i can help i can pray for them that is in my hand i can pray for my children swami ji they don't listen to me they are not ready to talk to me so what you can do you can pray for them without insisting that they should listen and they should do like this first of all are you sarvagna that what you are thinking alone is right may not be so what you are thinking how do you know it may not be so and even if you think no no swami ji ask my guru ji my guru ji also say do no what you are think is right but that person has got his own prarabdha your children have got your own prarabdha and if they have to suffer they will not listen to you so you have a particular limit up to which you can go you should know your limit if you go beyond that then you will be frustrated so karma phalam tyaktva means practically it means this not having insistence not having any resistance or reaction to karma phala in any manner that is karma phalam tyaktva and such a person who is following the life of karma yoga aapnoti attains what shantim peace and here bhagavan bhashya kara says peace means मोक्षाख्या शांति ही फाइनली अटेन द शांति विच इज इन दि फॉर्म ऑफ मोक्षा दि अल्टिमेट गोल ऑफ लाइफ एंड दि शांति इज वॉट नैष्ठिकीम शांति दि शांति विच इज बॉर्न ऑफ फॉलोइंग दि लाइफ ऑफ कर्मयोग सो कर्मयोग आलसो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट्स इन डायरेक्टली टू मोक्षा देर फॉर दिस मोक्षा विच इज कॉल्ड शांति हियर इज कॉल्ड नैष्ठिकीम निष्ठायाम भवा नैष्ठिकीम एंड हाउ कर्म योग कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू मोक्षा भगवान शंकराचार्य जी एक्सप्लेन हियर दट कर्म योग विल गिव मी सत्व शुद्धि मीन्स प्योरिटी ऑफ द माइंड प्योरिटी ऑफ द माइंड विल लीड मी टू ज्ञानम एंड ज्ञानम विल बी लेड बाय विल बी एंडिंग अप इन ज्ञान निष्ठा एंड द ज्ञान निष्ठा गिव्स मी मोक्षा सो कर्म योग इज पेविंग द वे फॉर moksha therefore it is called naishthikim shanti and this is the situation of karma yogi karma yogi finally attains moksha but here we can see one more thing is not only finally attains moksha even before he attains moksha that karma yogi is relatively free from anxiety relatively free from reaction relatively free from this quarrel conflicts because you see in your life why do you have conflicts because you have some insistence this is how it should be and then other person doesn't listen to you there is a resistance your insistence and resistance agraha and vigraha insistence plus agraha this resistance is vigraha fighting that only creates all problems so this person who is relatively free from that he will have shanti relative shanti even before moksha and we have seen earlier a person who has got relative shanti alone can claim absolute shanti means a person who is remaining peaceful with karma yoga alone can own up that i am shanta swarupa with dhyana yoga so this is the result of karma yoga now bhagwan wants to show 
that if karma yoga is not followed, what happens? Ayuktaha kama karena phale sakto nibadhyate. This ayuktaha means one who is not karma yogi, one who is doing karma only for material benefit, and that person is phale saktaha. He is attached to the result. Attachment to the result will be expressed in the form of insistence. on result obsession with the result and resistance to unexpected result so that phale saktah is how is phale saktah kama karena because of the force of kama why you are attached to the result because you are you are driven by this desire you have so much desire i want to fulfill this desire fulfill that desire therefore you will be particular about every outcome so kama karana karana means kama karana means the force of desire and because of that person nibadhyate so force of desire will make the person attached to the phala the karma phala result of action and because of that nibadhyate that person is maulya <coughs> if you are <coughs> not having insistence then bondage is not there insistence and resistance keep you bound and not only immediately bondage the samsara chakra also continues in and in that sense nibadhyate remains bound and person will be crying and all the time telling that see nobody understands me nobody helps me everybody is selfish i do everything for everybody nobody does for me this is a i mean complaint of most of the people some the world is too much people are very very selfish people are very inconsiderate you know i do so much for them but when uh, when i need nobody is available all these things victimized i am victimized and the world is victimizer that type of thinking will continue people think that see i am a very good person but some is all people are harassing me this is also another thinking sansari thinking what i am a very good person and all are very rogue and they are harassing me that's what but do you ask other people they will tell you, you are also like that <laughs> that is the maya maya is like that everybody think that others are selfish i am only selfless how is it possible It, but that is how everybody thinks. I am a very good Swami Ji. I am a gentleman, but people are not gentle. Gentle. <laughs> All right. So people keep on complaining, complaining, complaining. So it's an inner noise. So even if you are observing Mahanam, but your inner noise continues. Like you know, radio in, inside some machine, the problem is there. Grrr, will continue. <laughs> even the outside all area etc you are not disturbing but inside problem is there what this continue nowadays it, people don't explain the olden days used to have this you know inside some uh, knob or some tra- transistor something is not okay valve is not okay Grrr. so we we see when you are sitting quietly are you comfortable with yourself or some complaints come if complaints keep coming means some inner voice inner noise is there inner noise comes because of your attachment to a particular situation particular person don't blame anybody for your inner it is inner noise for inner noise how can you blame the external world when you are sitting quietly nobody is disturbing you that time are you remaining undisturbed or not many people can't remain even quietly they are sitting they feel so much disturbed they will be caught up in this now like this you know they are, <laughs> they are fighting in their mind they are fighting so here the person who is not a karma yogi that person nibadhyate remains bound all right so with this the 10 to 12 bhagwan talked about this karma yogi karma yoga lifestyle which is very important for preparing the person now from 13 to 21 bhagwan is talking about jnana yoga because 
karma yoga definitely gives some relief but karma yoga itself is not a solution like first aid when accident is there first aid is done then bleeding etc will stop but that is not the treatment people think oh bleeding etc stop let us go home that is not correct so many <laughs> bones are broken etc you have to take it take care of them similarly karma yoga gives good relief but karma yoga cannot give you complete solution to the problem of self rejection problem of sense of limitation problem of guilt and hurt you cannot be completely free from that therefore you have to go to the hospital of gnana yoga first aid karma yoga is done but you have to go to the hospital of gnana yoga and that gnana yoga is presented from 13th to 21st sarva karmani manasa sarva karmani manasa sanyasya aste sukham vashi नवद्वारे पुरे दिस इज वन ऑफ दी फेमस श्लोका ऑफ द फिफ्थ चैप्टर एंड वन ऑफ दी फेवरेट श्लोका ऑफ भगवान शंकराचार्य जी इन सेकंड चैप्टर आल्सो व्हेन ही राइट्स द कमेंट्री ही ब्रिंग्स दिस श्लोका एंड हियर आल्सो ही राइट्स In quite elaborate commentary. So this shloka is talking about the wisdom of a wise person, and that wisdom of a wise person is presented here in the form of jnana karma sanyasa, inner renunciation of action through knowledge. Because complete renunciation. at physical level is not possible even a wise person cannot give up all karmas physically then only he has to remain in samadhi he cannot have any active life life means relating to the world and therefore physical level karmas are not given up even person is in samadhi some activities in the body will be going on therefore complete freedom from action is only by the wisdom and what is that wisdom i am consciousness and i consciousness am free from action in my presence actions happen but i myself am not the doer of action like by the sunlight the activities happen but the sunlight is not the doer of any action so with this understanding what all activities are happening at the body mind sense complex they are cognitively dropped means my kartrutvam with reference to those actions are dropped therefore there is no guilt why did i do this why did i do this that is not there it happened he yesterday mind was like this and therefore he it decided like this he talk like this some people they keep on you know harping on the the keep on this focusing on the past why did i do like this why did i do how can i say that? i should not have said it happened that is that is how the mind was no but swami ji it is a wrong decision but when you are in that position the data available will make you decide the way you decide it hindsight you say that oh i should not have done like many people after 20 years of marriage think why should not have married this person <laughs> it is a late wisdom <laughs> so that time you were you had this particular mindset so you will marry that person there is no point in 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 regretting but people regret why because there is a strong kartrutva strong sense of doership the wisdom makes you free from that and not only he does not consider himself to be karta the doer direct doer he does not consider himself to be karaita indirect doer 
Indirect verb means what? You tell your son, do Sandhya Vandana. Then it is called what? Indirect version. Making others do. The parents, you know, they are born in this particular Brahmin family and therefore they have been told Sandhya Vandanam, Sandhya Vandanam and son doesn't do it. Many mothers feel so bad about it. Sandhya, Sandhya, they will say. Sandhi, Sandhi. So do it. Nah, it doesn't do it. So person feels bad. But if this wisdom is there, I am neither karta nor karaita. So there is no guilt about doing something or not doing something. There is no guilt about making others do something or not making others do something. And that freedom of a wise person, freedom based on wisdom enjoyed by a wise person is presented here in, the, in this shloka. He says, Sarva karmani manasa sanyasya Having renounced, sanyasya means having renounced all karmas manasa through the mind. And here mind has got the meaning wisdom. Viveka buddhya, Bhashakara says, by Viveka buddhi, by the atma anatma viveka, that all the activities are happening in anatma, I, atma, am the sakshi of all activities. So this is called manasa. Through wisdom, sarva karmani sanyasya, having given up all the karmas. And all karmas means what? Vihita karma, the prescribed <coughs> karma, kamya karma, naimitik or nishiddha karma, prayashitta karma, laukik karma, vedika karma, sarva karmani sanyasya. And what does he do? Aste. He just stays, remains. Sukham, comfortably. Who is he? Vashi, one who has got the shamadama. Because of his sadhana for so many years, he, he has got spontaneous mastery over the body, mind, sense complex. So as a person, he has got the mastery over the body, mind, sense complex and he has got the wisdom, therefore, he renounces the karma. And where does he stay? Navadvare pure dehi. Dehi means dehaha asti abhivyakti <coughs> abhivyakti sadhana taya yasya. So, one who has got body as the medium of manifestation. Means a person is alive. Dehi conveys the idea, person is alive. So, wise person who is manifesting through the body, that is called Dehi, he stays where? Pure, in the city. What type of city? Navadwara. Navadwara means what? Having nine gates. So, wise person stays in the city, which is a word used for the body. Wise person stays in the city of the body, which is having nine gates. Like in olden days, cities will have what? No, eastern gate, western gate, northern gate. The gate will have name. I think, in, I don't know whether in Karat, in Coimbatore it is there. We don't have, no, because fort is not there. But in many cities, fort cities, they will have. I know one place, so they will have this, this darwaja, it's called darwaja. So that gate is there, that gate is there, so it will be there. In Ahmedabad and all it is there. So, nine gates are there. Now our body, we think even single gate is not there, why, how nine gates are there? This is a figurative expression. So, on the face, we have got seven gates. Gates means what? Through which something goes in and something comes out. That is called gate. So, seven are there. What are they seven? Two eyes, two ears and two nostrils and one mouth. These are called seven gates. Seven gates on the face region itself. Our body is full of gates. Gated community like this. <laughs> in a different sense. Gated community is a different meaning, but is <laughs> having so many gates. <laughs> so, gated community is there, no? Like people's estate and uh, gates will be there, gated community. So, anyway, so <laughs> seven gates are there. 
two gates are down below one is for evacuation then one is for urination so nine gates are there in this body so our body is called navadwara having nine gates so in this body a wise person stays now the objection is raised he said what a big thing you are talking everybody stays in uh, the body only you know everybody stays nobody goes stays outside and once in a while comes no not like that everybody stays in the body then why are you describing wise person as staying in the body see when we make any description of a wise person it should be special means it should be distinguishing feature we don't say a wise person eats wise person drinks wise person breathes we don't say that but that's a ignorant person also does wise person talks ignorant person also talks what a big deal so why it is said this wise person is staying in the body other wise person also stays in the body this question is raised in the commentary on this shloka so bhagwan shankaracharya said no ignorant person doesn't think that he stays in the body if i ask somebody where do you live what will you say rs puram something will say i know only one it is <laughs> rs puram or gandhi puram or something you know names are very complicated name you know so sai baba ko yeah that is easy <laughs> 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 otherwise some thodi is gallur or something is <laughs> very difficult to pronounce so perinayakam paliyam or something is there so it is difficult to remember so this so if i ask you what do you say i stay in rs puram i stay in this sai baba colony so ignorant person thinks that he is staying in the house or he can say that i stay in this bungalow i stay in this apartment so ignorant person thinks that he is staying in a house it means he is considering himself to be the body and body stays in a house therefore he considers himself to be staying in the house or staying in a particular area so ignorant person doesn't say if you ask somebody where do you live i live in this body does anybody say like this no ignorant person will have the thinking i am staying in the house or i am staying on the road side whatever <laughs> so ignorant person always thinks like that he doesn't think that he stays in the body why because ignorant person thinks himself to be one with the body dehadi sangata atmadarshi he is considering himself to be as good as the body is so whatever be the address of the body that will be the address of an ignorant person so ignorant person doesn't think he stays in the body he stays in a house in a particular area whereas the wise person has this wisdom that this body is not me i am manifesting through this body i obtain in this body but i am not this body like akasha is obtain in the body akasha is not the body akasha is not a pot akasha is manifesting through the pot or a light is manifesting through the object light is not the object so similarly wise person has this wisdom i consciousness am manifesting through this body i live in the body means i manifest through this body i am not the body therefore this description that a wise person lives in the body having nine gates indicates that wise person looks upon himself to be distinct from this body which is not the case of ignorant person so wise person stays in the body is a distinct feature of a wise person the ignorant person doesn't stay in the body doesn't think himself to be staying in the body he thinks staying in the house there is wise person has got this objectivity about the body this is one of the important step in the pursuit of 
आत्मज्ञान एंड दैट इज ऑब्जेक्टिविटी अबाउट द बॉडी इफ समबडी आस हाउ ओल्ड आर यू यू शुड बी एबल टू से सिक्सटी टू ईयर्स कंप्लीटेड यू शुड बी एबल टू से दैट समथिंग अराउंड फिफ्टी फाइव सिक्सटी समथिंग वाई शुड यू से दैट सम पीपल से आई डोंट रिमेम्बर वन लेडी वन लेडी बैंगलोर आई लाइक दैट सी सी लास्ट ईयर सी विल बी टेलिंग दिस सेवेंटी सॉरी सेवेंटी ईयर्स नेक्स्ट ईयर आफ्टर वन ईयर आल्सो सेवेंटी ईयर्स आफ्टर थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ सेवेंटी आई सर अम्मा थे टू थ्री ईयर्स यू हैव बीन टेलिंग सेवेंटी सेवेंटी सर ओनली और आफ्टर फाइव ईयर्स आई विल चेंज सो Every five years, then Bangalore will connect me with them. Connect me with them. See, there is something every five years I change. So, because she doesn't like to accept that so easily that I am some seventy three, seventy four, you know. So that is called subjectivity. First, be objective about this body. This body is male or female. That is how body is. That you cannot even hide or tell lie. So that you cannot. That also people some try that uh, some people try to look like a man so that uh, something unnecessary. And we try to look fairer than what we our body is. You know. They say three three notch up you can have the so fair and lovely use. You know. Fair and lovely, it's a fair name. Fair and lovely. As if like fair means lovely will be there. So fair need not be lovely all the time. But people think that if I am looking fair, I will be looking lovely. So let us accept. This is how the body is. It is seventy year old. It is seventy year old. People ask us, what is your age? Suppose we ask. Generally, we should not ask. But suppose some context we ask. Then you know what they say, Swamiji. What do you think? You know? <laughs> <laughs> they don't give answer. What is it? <laughs> so they want to avoid that. Like, see, they want to know how old they are looking. How young they are? Ah, uh, yeah. How young are they? Yeah, correct. And therefore, you know, they are indirectly they are prompting us to tell a lie. <laughs> because even though we think this fellow is looking 70 but i think if we tell that person may feel bad <laughs> so we have to say some 65 or something you know 65 70 let us be objective about the age of the body if this you cannot accept how are you going to accept the subtler level at the mind no body is a gross thing at the level of body itself you are not able to remain objective then where how will you accept that mind also i am drashta and mind condition is not my condition that will be very very difficult if somebody asks what is your weight if you are a fat fellow so you should be able to tell i have not weight for some time you can say that <laughs> just give some introduction but Nothing wrong, you know. This is the weight of the body. Is there any this health issue? If somebody very, uh, very what is caringly, if somebody asks, we did not hide. Everybody we did not tell. You know, I have this problem. I have this. We did not tell. But in some situation, when somebody out of concern asks, you can mention. Everybody you tell, then it may be misuse and the news spreads, and some people are unnecessary worried. But otherwise, this is how the body is. So idea is that objectivity with reference to the body, the wise person has that is indicated by navadvare pure aste. And how he remains having renounce all karma, and therefore what? Sukham aste. Wise person lives comfortably in the body. Why he lives comfortably? Because he does not have guilt and hurt based on doing and not doing. He does not have any complex based on the features of the body. Therefore, sukham. 
if you are accepting yourself then wherever you are you will be comfortable and if you do not accept yourself wherever you are you will be uncomfortable basically your self acceptance self non acceptance makes whether you are comfortable or not and when you are comfortable with yourself relatively you will be comfortable with the world most of the time our discomfort with the world is coming from our discomfort with ourselves i am unhappy with my son because i am unhappy being the father of such a son that is my issue if somebody else is doing i have no problem but i am the father of such a son this is not acceptable to me i am the wife or husband of such a spouse not acceptable to me if you accept i am okay being the father or mother or wife or husband of such a person then you do not have conflict many times you know this food given was less that is not a complaint but i am the one who was not considered i am the one who was neglected that is a problem food was not given by chance somebody comes and tells you we ran out of it uh, can you wait and today we are not able to give somebody tells you then you don't feel bad but if you feel that they are neglecting you that bothers you so it means your discomfort with the world is primarily coming from your discomfort with yourself see in your back, on your back if you have so many like uh, wounds are there then you know whichever bed you sleep you feel this bed is not good if you don't know that you have problem then you think beds have got problem bed doesn't have problem you have problem thus this wise person sukha maste wherever he or she is comfortable you are comfortable with yourself because you see yourself to be acceptable i am limitless brahman therefore i am always acceptable and therefore i am comfortable with myself and therefore whatever external situation happens does not happen it doesn't matter sukha maste your smile cannot be taken away by anybody otherwise everybody takes away your smile with great difficulty you are morning smile because you got good prasadam in the temple you some smile, <laughs> smile over there moment you come out at chapel somebody has taken away <laughs> or not taken away is is displaced change the position will so disturb you why because you are not seeing yourself to be someone who is basically acceptable if you are basically acceptable then all small small these vagaries can be handled it's not a big thing it is just a matter of management of situation like sometimes dal is more and rasri sambar is more and rasam is less you manage you eat more sambar let's rasam or suddenly other way around rasam is more sambar is less so what do you do it is sambar you take and rasam you you take more manage this is called management of situation situational management situational management doesn't create stress if you are in charge of the situation otherwise every situation becomes a problem and crisis almost every situation this wise person is sukham aste so what a nice thing i can be comfortable with myself whatever happens and naiva kurvanna karyan so there is a technical explanation that sarva karmani sanyasya means he has renounced the karma then again you are selling not naiva kurvan means not doing karma na karyan means not making others do why repetition so first one sarva karmani sanyasya indicates that the karmas done by the body mind sense complex 
he do not transfer it to atma that is the meaning of sarva karmani sanyasya otherwise what happens the body does karma and i import i attribute to myself and feel guilty mind thinks some some way and i identify with the mind and i feel guilty so wise person doesn't do that this is you know let caesar's property go on to caesar that's a, there is a saying so let caesar things go into caesar so caesar was a the king so let it go so that is called sarva karmani sanyasya neva kurvanna karayan indicates that wise person knows this fact i am that self which does not have any intrinsic karma so why the atma is free from direct action and indirect action so intrinsically also karmas are not there and whatever superimposed karmas were there that also is renounced so intrinsic karmas are not there that is appreciated by wise person i atma am ever free from action intrinsically there is no action in me and sarva karmani manasa sanyas indicates that activities of the body mind sense complex are not transferred to atma so one is transference problem is not there other is intrinsic problem of doing karma or not doing karma is not there doing directly and doing indirectly is not there i do not do anything i do not make others do thus the wise person because of wisdom remains free from action he doesn't mean there is no activity on the from the body of the wise person activities are there but amiss the activity he appreciates himself to be actionless more we'll see in the next class om purnamada purnamidam purna purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavashishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha